Okay, I'm here with Winston. He's a good looking puppy. Sit. Remember, anytime your dog sits or does something you want, make sure you pet him and reward him for doing that. The more you do that, the more they'll do that behavior instead of barking. All right, um, in this video, uh, I'm gonna go over, uh, basically these dogs are kind of, uh, there's three of them in the house and they are used to telling their humans what to do. They don't really have a lot of impulse control. And uh, so in this video, I'm gonna go over how you can, uh, first of all, teach a dog to leave a room as well as go to a room. And then also how to teach a dog to stay out of a room with no barrier what I call enforcing a visible line. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna teach the dog uh, to leave the room. Now this is the kitchen, this is, I'm gonna be considering this out, even though it's technically the dining room. Now anytime you give a dog a treat, the treat should go in the mouth first, they share the command word afterwards. So I'm gonna show Winston that I have a treat, and I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna qualify what out means. So I'm gonna roll the treat just right a couple feet out and say the word out when it goes into his mouth. Usually coming back, out. You want to just throw it about two or three feet outside the room. So I would, what I would have you do is then go to the next doorway and be in the room and roll the treat outside twice, two treats out, one at a time, just like I did there. And then go to the next to the bedroom, two treats out, bathroom, uh, billiards room, uh, guest room, master bedroom, so on and so forth. Then once I've done, and also let's say that uh, the, the, you can't see it right now because of the angle, but the table, kitchen table is right here. So let's say I wanted the dog to leave this area. Well, I might actually roll it here and say out, meaning to move out away from the kitchen, uh, the dining room area. So if you have like a, um, a carpet uh, or it goes from carpet to tile or wood to uh, carpet or something like that, that line makes it just like it does right here, makes it an easy way for the dog to see the distinction. So once I've done all of the outs, then I would go kitchen or roll one over here under the table and then say dining and bathroom and billiards. So you can now, after a while, you can teach the, you can just verbally command the dog to leave any room or to go into any room. Okay, so now your authority as a human goes whatever direction your hips and shoulders are pointing at. So right now my authority is pointing straight at Winston. Uh, if I turn like this, usually the dog will come in behind us or just follow us because our authority is not pointed at them. So in this case, what I want to do is I would first always give the dog the option to leave the room or, or I want to teach the dog how I want to behave and then give it a verbal command. If the dog doesn't, then I would do the exercise I'm about to show you here. So what I do is I go in here, I cross the threshold. Now, I want to make it more challenging and stepping forward towards the dog is also looked at as a little confrontational. So this is how dogs communicate with each other. I'm going to use the same mannerisms. Now he hasn't crossed the threshold. The threshold is the little metal line to change from tile to, uh, to wood. There, as soon as he crosses that, I got to immediately uh, disagree by marching at him. Now you saw he sat down. Anytime the dog sits down, you want to take a giant step backwards. Now he doesn't know where that line is. So he just uh, probed a little bit and sat down. That to me, I wanted to tell him I like that. And that's why I took a step backwards as well. So I have a couple high value train treats. I'm going to go ahead and drop one. I'm going to drop one and I should have been a little bit better prepared. He steps back. Now I could also make a hissing sound like a cat, and that's actually the verbal cue that I used to, like that I like to make. So now he's kind of, you understand? Now that was before he crossed the threshold. He's right at the, at the edge. And so the hiss can be done before. Lay down. I take a giant step backwards to tell him that's what I liked. I throw another one down and another one down. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a scenario where he wants to come in. And that was a good illustration as well. As soon as he vacated it, I stopped. I don't always have to go to the edge. Now, if he stays across the line, I would keep on going all the way until I run into him or until he vacates the edge. But if I took two steps and then he vacates, and I stopped wherever I was, in this case, a couple feet away from me. All right, now when we're in here cooking, we only have a three second window to correct or reward a dog. When I'm in here cooking, I'm over here, I'm grabbing the bananas, I'm grabbing stuff from the pots and pans, the microwaves, the tea, the refrigerator. When I'm doing this, my back is to the dog. Now for dogs, uh, anything you're always doing when you give it attention or pet it is what you're rewarding or validating. But to dogs also, anything they do in your presence that you don't disagree with is the same thing as agreeing. So not saying no is akin to saying yes. The way that dogs learn is they go through life probing and they're waiting for the leader to say no at a certain point. So then they come back and circle around and try that, probe that again and again. And if the, if the uh, disagreement is consistent, the dog learns, I'm not supposed to cross this line. 
under certain conditions or ever, depending on how, you know, so if the dog probes and when there's food in here, you did, you enforce the line. If there's no food in here, you don't enforce the line. They learn, they start to learn, I can't come in when you're preparing food, which was one of the rules I suggested off camera. So, but when I'm cooking, again, I'm thinking, I'm looking this way and my authority's here and my attention's here and the dog might cross the threshold and I don't see it. And then I see it and I come in and correct it, but it's been 10 seconds. The dog is not going to understand that I didn't, that I'm disagreeing it for the, for coming in the kitchen. It's one of the differences between human psychology and dog psychology. So the way I do this is I create scenarios where I can help the dog practice. So in this case, what I would do is I cross the threshold and Winston is way over there out of the shot. He's got this message under clear, but I just explain it to you guys a little bit further. So when I come across the threshold and Winston's here, I'd say out. If once he does the command, if he goes out, then I would maybe pull out a treat and then reward him for compliance. Then I'm gonna watch him out of the corner of my eye and come in here and he starts coming in, or I can turn to face him or I can march towards him. Those are three different variances or I can combine all of them if he crosses the threshold, I probably would hiss, march at him, and snap towards him and march all at the same time. So what I would do is first of all, tell him to leave. If he leaves, I reward him. Then I would come in here and I'd grab a plate and I'm kind of watching him or keeping my authority pointed towards him. Put the plate down here, grab, open the fridge, grab a piece of bacon, Put a piece of bacon on the on the plate. Grab the plate. Put the plate up here in the microwave. Microwave it for whatever the period of time is. Then I would bring it up and put it right over here. The whole time I'm doing this, I'm watching him out of the corner of my eye, or I'm keeping my hips pointed towards him. So once I've, I've microwaved it and I put it here, then I'm going to do my meal prep. I'm going to pull the ingredients from my actual meal out of the fridge. I'm going to pull the pots and pans out. But the whole time I'm doing this, I'm watching him out of the corner of my eye. So at any point that he tries to come in, I stop and I hiss and I march towards him if I need to. Now eventually all you have to do is just, and he'll understand it. So it sure looks like I'm cooking because I'm doing all the same things that we would do when we're normally cooking, but, and it sure smells like I'm cooking. I'm, the human is in the place where we cook, but every time I cross the threshold, they disagree the instant I cross that line. I get right up to it and they don't disagree, but once I cross it, they, 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 uh, they immediately disagree. After enough probes, the dog will get the message to say, oh, so I'm not, they don't want me to go in there. And the dog will lay down across, uh, lay down outside there. If they lay down across the line, but don't crawl in, I accept that. If they lay down and start belly crawling, I was at like zero tolerance, you can't come in here. So now I've done my meal prep, I've helped the dog warm up. Now I can put the bacon away if I need to, but now I can start doing my actual cooking. And now the dog is what we call warmed up and I'm, now can have my attention a little bit, not as, as focused here, because we taught the dog how to do this. This is a great exercise to do when you're gut right before you cook, or doing it every once in a while, and then pro start prolonging the length of time so the dog starts to understand, I can't go in the kitchen when they're cooking. Now I would do the same enforcement for this if you feed the dogs in here, I would feed the dogs in here, and again, the other dog has to stay outside the kitchen. So when one of the dogs is eating, because these dogs are challenging each other, and there's a lot of stress and anxiety, so the more that the humans act like leaders and enforce this and demonstrate their leadership, because when Winston is in here eating, uh, uh, Bindi is not allowed to come in. And so Winston sees the humans are protecting my back. And then when Winston gets in, he has to leave. Then Bindi gets to come in and Bindi gets a, her opportunity to see that we're protecting her back. And Winston's not allowed to come in there. And they're going to probe and try to take each other's food or get near by. And that's where some of those fights have come from. And so the more that we do this, then you should start seeing more of that play because they both have been demoted to the same level and they both see that the humans are acting like that authority figure. Um, all right, Winston. This is my buddy Winston, watch this. Didn't even come in the kitchen. You did it twice and you came right up to the edge and didn't come in. This is my buddy Winston, he is a good looking puppy. And uh, this is Winston, uh, this is uh, basically, these are some tips and tricks you can use. If you have a dog that lacks self-control, teaching them to leave the room as well as to stay out of the room to develop and practice that self-restraint.